Hello one and all, I'm Eki Thumb and welcome back to Osiris New Dawn. Today we're going to start off, because there's been a patch since the last video, by taking a look at what was in that patch. Now, tragically, we've lost the Ompa, we've lost Baldrick. Uh, he's been removed out of the game, completely patched out. Don't think you can even get hold of him anymore, uh, even like crafting them through the skill menu. Basically they've decided that they wanted to, in their words, rethink him. So hopefully that means at some point in the future there'll be a newer, better version of the droid, perhaps with a pathing AI. Who knows? But uh, the two most important changes I think to this uh, this patch are the addition of the stone oven and the primitive workbench. And the stone oven requires eight rocks. And you can see this is now needed to produce uh, produce ingots. Which are the new, like you can't just spend iron anymore, you actually have to spend ingots of stuff. So here for example, uh, we have to cook the gold. I assume there's a way to do this indoors as well. I literally just fired this up and come straight into a new game to check how this works. So I'm hoping that there's, like the forge will let me craft ingots or something like that. But uh, let's have a look, we're going to start off with the stone oven. So we need to find rocks. Now rocks have been lying around on the ground for quite a while. They were not used for anything, I don't believe, before this patch. So to be honest I've not really developed my skill in detecting them. Let's find a few if we can. And I think basically they look like smaller versions of the ore nodes. They're like little orange lumps. Yeah, here we are. So this is a rock. We need to find eight of those. And we can make our... Ah, looks like there's plenty of them down here. So as usual, there's nothing for you out in the Great Sand Sea. It's all down here in the... Uh, in the inland deserts. That's a rock over there. The locator can be very helpful to find them because they are quite uh, quite hidden in the long grass. Although, they're easy enough to spot around here. Five rocks. Ah, here we go. Seven and eight. So that's for the stone oven, and then the primitive workbench requires an additional four, so let's get those while we're here. Two, three, and four. Right, let's head back to the dome. We'll deploy these around there as if we were going to like start a new game properly. And uh, we'll see how they work. So we're back at the dome. So under utilities, stone oven. We can't even build on the sun, can we? No. Actually, I'm gonna fuck it. I'm gonna move this inland to that nice flat area over the hill. This'll do. This'll do. Okay, right. Oh, that's interesting. I just noticed something. Um, those boxes of steamed carrot have been turned into actual carrots, and the potato here has been turned into, well, turned into potato, but they used to be baked potatoes. I bet you have to cook these in the, uh, in the, f the stone oven now. Okay, well... Whatever. Um, I wanted to build that at full, but let's have a look. Stone oven. So it can make all the ingots, looks like. Uh, it can grill meat. It's got minuscule storage. No, 
No, apparently it can't. Um, although the potatoes are edible directly now. I don't know how you make baked potatoes. Then you must have to do them in the uh, in the kitchen, like inside. Anyway, the next new structure they've added is the primitive workbench, which we need four iron ingots. Uh, it's only one lump of iron. Uh, it's three lumps of iron makes one ingot. Are you kidding me? Wow. So three lumps of iron makes one iron ingot, and we need four ingots. So twelve lumps of iron to make a primitive workbench. Holy shit. I hope they've upgraded the iron drops, otherwise that's going to be a real grind. I suppose it's not... Having said that, it won't be so bad. Especially not when you spawn right next to a bunch of iron deposits like this. Looks like they actually give you more iron. I don't know why they've done that. I might be just imagining things, but it looks like you get more materials per hit with the chisel as well. Whatever. A few ingots. Uh, craft a primitive workbench. There we go, so that's number two. What can this make? Axe head. Metal axe head, metal blade, stone blade. Flare, small flare. Made with pipes and berries, really. That's really weird, so melee, wep melee weapons are locked off to the scientists at the start. <laughs> like a bashing rock. It's a rock you hit things with. Basically turns a rock into a wieldable weapon. Makeshift bandage. Oh, makeshift bandage. Okay. Patch tape. And what's the difference between these? Right, so there's patch tape and masking tape. This one weighs more, but only takes one banana leaf. This one weighs less and takes two banana leaves. And they've made a... The stone axe head only costs... Well, it uses stone to make it instead of iron. That's a change. The shard blade is literally a shard of stone with some masking tape right around it. Crab scythe. What's si 16 plus minus 2? What's that in comparison to the pistol? Doesn't say. What's that in comparison to the rifle? Uh, it's Right, it's twice as much damage as an assault rifle hit, but the assault rifle shoots three times. It's probably usable, like instead of the pistol. Maybe we could maybe we could try making one of those. I'm sure we've got some crab talons laying around somewhere in the main game. All right. Well, as you can imagine, that's going to be your uh, your sort of starting build order now. Uh, and then, like once you built these, then you go on as normal. You build your depository, you build your forge, etc., etc. Alright, well, uh, that'll do for our little look at the new new, new player experience. Uh, let's get rid of Tragic Noob. And here we are back in the main game, still where we left off, by the spaceship. Before we go anywhere with the spaceship, I'm going to check indoors. I'm going to have a look at what changes they made to the... Uh, the forge and the fabricator, that kind of thing. Well, since we're, we're going past here first, actually, let's have a look at the uh, anything they've done to the lab. Uh, 
So this stuff you still make with raw materials. These aren't ingots, these are still gold. So they've changed nothing in the lab at all. Can finally breathe easy. Ah yeah, okay, the forge can make ingots. Can you make a stone axe with anything? Uh, not a stone axe, like a metal axe. Because you can make a metal axe head at the work table. Okay, so you can make ingots at the forge. You'll notice that the out, the um, base storage now only has three units. Oh, I hope I haven't lost any materials because I had a lot of stuff stored up in various places. Fabricator, yeah, all this stuff takes ingots, so I guess they just haven't changed the requirements on the um, laboratory. Chemistry table. I wonder where you make the actual um, metal axe then. That metal axe head doesn't seem to be used for anything at the moment. So it's become more important to have actual storage now because everything needs to go into a crate or a box of some description. Uh, and I suppose there's been no changes to the barracks, has there? Hit points and st oh, sweet, yeah. So that that whole thing is the couch, isn't it? So just activa activating the monitor just gives me a a quick buff. Okay, so this episode we were going to go and have, have a look around uh, Aziel, I think. So, we're going to do that. First of all, we're going to need to make some more containers to take some liquids with us. Because I hear you need a lot of liquids. I guess there's no sources of them up there. So we need steel, we need glass. That can't be all the glass I have. I hope he didn't get wiped. Oh, I haven't checked in the uh, printer actually. What can we make here? Just glass containers. It's basically just a, a rubbish version of the fabricator. Yeah, whatever. Uh, damn it. Do you think four jars of, of liquid will be enough? I mean, that is, like, several days worth of drinking that we can do. Let's risk it. We'll just go and make sure we refill those before we go. Uh, oh, damn it, where's my sap tree gone? Didn't there used to be a sap tree like right outside my base? Have they moved it? The closest one is bloody that one up there now. Or this one over here. 
Okay, we've got four jars. Four full jars, well, two full jars of water, two full jars of sap. I'm assuming that's going to be enough. I'll tell you what we do need, though, is some assault rifle ammo. We're completely dry on that. So, let's just get back to the base and see what we need to make that. Assault rifle, magazine, titanium ingots and steel. Shouldn't be a problem as long as we've still got some iron, because we don't have very much steel left. We have a tiny amount of iron. Shit. We need to do a little bit of digging then. I could swear they've actually changed the sound of the uh, the chisel, like hitting those base metal nodes. Come on then, you little bastard. Don't think just because Baldrick's not here I can't take you on. Apparently Baldrick wasn't the only one suffering from pathing issues. Oh, where are you going? Come back. Whatever. Uh, and we could think about making a... Uh, I'm sure I've got a crab talent somewhere. Let's stay on focus, though. Stay on focus. Get the... Fuck, you know. Get the steel produced. Now, do we need to make ingots before we make steel now? Yes, we do. Iron ingot, aluminium ingot, and... Titanium ingot. It's going to be annoying the fact that they haven't converted the lab, because my instinct would be to like get all my ores and just mass convert them into ingots. But if you need raw materials to feed into the lab, that's not going to be viable. That's going to be I'm, I'm going to have to store it raw in case I need to use it on vehicles, and then when I need to make something, I'm going to have to come out here, then make it into ingots, then make it into um, stuff. Uh, Iron, magnesium, aluminium, and let's make some titanium as well. Then we make the steel. And then we make some ammunition. Okay, and let's drop off the rest of the stuff we don't need. Uh, I'm going to need more crates indoors. For now, let's just use this depository here. Guts, apple. Uh, we'll take the baked spuds with us. Berry, glass. Lithium, or grilled alien meat. No, we'll take that with us. Skelly tails, uh, uncooked meat can go in there. Oh, and of course beacons. Uh, we'll want to take some beacons with us. What's that? Plutonium ingots. We've got plutonium somewhere. And there we are. So if we find anything interesting on Aziel, we'll be able to mark it out. 
Let's keep some plutonium ingots in there. Okie dokie. Um, I do believe that's it. So I'm doing this completely blind. I've never... I mean, last episode was the first time I'd ever flown the spaceship. This episode is going to be the first time I try and get into space with it. So we're going to hope this goes well. We're upside down, that's not a good thing. Okay, and I guess we just fly upwards. We're space to exit planet, there we go. Holy shit, we're in space. Let's hope I can remember how to get back again. It's not like it's not easy to miss, is it? It's the giant, put the giant uh, orange planet, in fact. And I suppose that's Aziel over there. Well, it's uh, the only other planet I can see. Uh, do I have to stay stay low or something? I seem to be losing speed as I go further away from Proteus. Oh. Do you know I get the feeling I'm doing something wrong here? I'm sure it's not supposed to take this long. Considering there's literally nothing to do in space. Apart from just fly from Aziel to Proteus and back again. Uh, I'm going to do something I probably should have done before flying out of the atmosphere and just go and check how you actually get to Aziel. Okay, apparently I'm pointing at the wrong planet. From what everyone's saying, there should be a small planet through the asteroid field somewhere. And if I mouse over it properly, it should give me the option to just press enter and go there, from what it says. Right, so we've just overflown our spawn position. Let's try going back into space. Let's see if we can find it again. So, a small planet through the asteroid field. Oh, that one! Aziel, press space. Fourth moon of Theseus Prime. Atmosphere, nitrogen surface, rocky. Okay. Yes, let's travel to Aziel then. We're just going for a look at the moment. Let's get down there. It's a very different sort of planet, isn't it? And what the... F Why am I upside down? Why did I enter Aziel's atmosphere upside down? Jesus, no, I don't want to exit the planet. Fuck off. Slow down, for fuck's sake. Go into hover mode or something. Let's throttle down to a sensible speed.
That's more like it. A steady 80 kilometers per hour. Right, so there's a whole new planet here to explore. Uh, what? There's, someone gave me some coordinates they wanted me to look at. Let's have a look for those. About 24 lat, 30 long. Uh, behind me, I think. Let's take it a nice sort of cruise velocity, so we can have a good look at the surface. Take a look at those dials in the bottom left. Environmental temperature, minus 126.2.1. Ah, uh, wow. We've got a pretty interesting formation of fallen rocks or something here. I'm not seeing much on the ground. I'll probably have to go and have a closer look. Okay, I'm starting to get the hang of the uh, the spaceship a little bit now. Hold on, we need to go higher lat and basically hold the long. I'll tell you what is missing from this is some kind of compass heading that shows not only what point you're at but which which way you're heading. Even the locator doesn't really do well in that regard because sometimes like you you get like the point one hello what do we have here? Point one's uh, scale points but sometimes they don't all fit on the screen at once. Um, yeah, so, uh, who was it again? 333 Socks, uh, this is the place you were talking about. It's 24 lat, 29.6 longish. Um, yes, all the stuff is still here. Excellent, that's a good tip, thanks mate. What's this stuff? Random precious metals, random precious metals, we've got lithium here, we've got titanium, a bunch of other precious metals. Yeah, good find. I'd say that's worth a beacon, wouldn't you? Right, let's name that. Diamonds and lithium. No, not equal. Diamonds equals lithium. Diamonds plus lithium. We got nickel. Um, did you say there was some tungsten here? Let's see. Um, there used to be 101 units of diamond, two big blocks of lithium, nickel, and tungsten. So he says. Um, I think the nickel and tungsten might have been replaced with those random precious metal nodes, unless there's more stuff like in the area.
Having said that, these appear to be basically nickel nodes. We're getting a lot of the stuff from them. No tungsten, uh, but plenty of nickel. them. Let's have a look around the outside. Oh, there's some more stuff over here. Magnesium we've got. We've got some base metals. Base metals. I mean, you could quite easily build on this planet, it looks like. Um, there's probably not a... Well, actually, there will be a way to generate water, won't there? Once you're able to build the habitat. Yeah, you could survive here. Uh, once you've got this water reclaimer. You need aluminium, copper, circuit, glass, rubber, wire. Now there's a point, is there... What kind of gas nodes are there on this planet actually in general? Lithium, precious metal... Oh! Hello Baldrick. Um... Fancy seeing you here. What are you doing here? I thought you'd been patched out. You uh, you're right here, are you? You don't mind the cold at all? That's <laughs> so weird. Wasn't expecting to see him. Let's have another bit of a look around. We've still got two more beacons we can plant, um, plant down somewhere. I'm wondering if there might be a bit of chlorine on the planet. So I haven't found chlorine on Proteus. I'm thinking maybe they've moved it up here. take us quite a while to... jeez, oh this takes me right back to Imperion where the first thing you do on getting to a planet is spend like 20 minutes flying around exploring the thing. What do we have here? Is this anything or is it... I think that's just natural, isn't it? And then it looks like we've got the equivalent of the Great Saturn Sea. We've got an ice sea. Sort of bounding the world. Now what's all this red crap here? Steamy, whatever it is. Ooh, hello. Given the way the environment temperature shot up to about 400 degrees, I'd say that's lava. I wonder if there's like a Goldilocks zone around the edge of it where you don't take either heat or cold damage. did seem to change rather abruptly, but we are flying at several hundred uh, kilometres per hour anyway. It's actually really difficult to see anything on the ground at all in this mist. I'm just stopping to get out because I want to use the locator. There's no nodes showing in the area, which normally means there's nothing really here. And there could be, but uh, right. I'm at thirty-one long. So if I fly directly that way, directly towards that planet, then we can do a full, full sweep of the place. So that way. It's actually really bloody pointless doing this at night. We'll come back here. Um, We'll definitely come back to Aziel. I think for now though, the other thing I wanted to do now that I've got a vehicle to get there quickly is there's a point that Fate Weaver gave me to look at as well. 
which I wasn't sure if I'd been to already or not yet. Let's see. Seventeen and a half long. Now I've got to find Proteus again somewhere up here. Shouldn't be too hard to spot. It's the orange one. There we go. Proteus 2. New home among the stars. Sweet new home among the stars. I'll tell you one thing. This is going to make our hydrogen runs much simpler. Now I'm just going to land so I can get out the locator and get ourselves oriented. Uh, it's at 17.5 long, minus 22.2 lat. Seventeen point five long, so that's east minus twenty two point two lat, so that is uh southeast Oh no, northeast Uh how does this work? So latitude increases as you go north, longitude increases Increases as you go east. And what was it again? So it's 17 and a half long minus 22.2 lat. So east and yeah, east and south. Let's try not to crash into that. Okay, let's crash into that. Oh god. Oh, I'm probably going completely the wrong way now. Another thing I would like when flying the ship is the ability to look down. Okay, I think we can land here. Uh, no, good shout, Fate Weaver. We definitely haven't been to this one. I dare say it's a copy-paste of the others, though, from looking at it. I wonder what these are eventually going to be for. They must be just placeholders for something. There's, there's a little mountain pass back here. Directly overlooking the Sand Sea. I mean, this seems like a very deliberately designed mountain pass, doesn't it? So I would assume eventually there's going to be a reason to go there. So that is, uh, is that like the th third one of these we've found? I bet they're going to add more dungeons, that's what it's going to be, eventually. Oh. Ow. Christ. Uh, 
this uh, this seems like some kind of refinery or maybe a water like yeah like a water refining or what's the word like water treatment plant or something like that so we've got the pipes coming up from underground we've got the big storage tank there maybe we found the uh, the oil plant or something like that in the area. I still have not found any source of chlorine in the game. Oh, I mean, there's our survivor today. Well, there's nothing much around. I'm going to tag this though, because I'm pretty sure at some point they are going to turn these into like useful locations. I mean, someone's put a lot of work into designing that building. So it's going to be like for something eventually, it's not just going to be for show. So, let's drop a beacon here. And this one will call... I'm going to call it the oil refinery. Well, who knows what it'll eventually be. It's going to be something to do with liquids. There's a big tank over there. Let's just double check. No, I mean, these... Actually, those, no, the crates didn't have anything in them, even in the mines, did they? It's quite difficult to control in this bloody treacle mode as well. Quite difficult to control the spaceship. Jesus, okay. Um, well, I reckon that's about it for this episode. I've been recording for about an hour. Uh, we've done pretty much everything I wanted to today. I was hoping I was going to stumble on some chlorine geysers, either here or on Aziel, but no such luck. So, we shall have to continue exploring... So, what's that? That's the hydrogen... Oh yeah, the floating rocks. This is the hydrogen area. Alright, yeah, so, uh, we'll continue exploring a little bit from the air next time, see what else we can see. There's some other vehicles I want to work on as well, and we can also now make some... Uh, heavy assault rifle ammunition. Uh, we also need to start building defences around the base or even possibly moving the base to a new spot. Um, although it was nice being close to that much uh, base metal to begin with, I am kind of regretting being in the arse end of nowhere. It's, it doesn't matter so much now that we can fly, of course. So maybe we won't move it, maybe we'll just stick up some turrets around the base where we are. Ugh. Alright. <laughs> That'll do for one episode of Osiris New Dawn anyway. I've been Eki Thumpner. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Like and subscribe if you would like to see more gameplay of this game. And I will see you next time.